Welcome to another episode of Eric Wade Whiskey Studies, and this is part three in my series on the business of Scotch whiskey. Um, this was part of my study for the diploma in single malt Scotch from the Edinburgh Whiskey Academy. However, I've already passed the class, I already got the diploma. Uh, my series on the history of Scotch whiskey was done before the class. The material we're going over in this series is also part of the pre-required studying before you actually take the class. So I've already passed the class. It was a fantastic class. They have a new series coming out, a new course available. It's gonna be coming out online and they've asked me to uh, review it for them. So uh, pretty soon I'll be doing a review of that and giving you more information about that. That'll be sort of an introductory uh, course available online uh, and, and should be uh, available uh, shortly. So in this video, we're gonna look at uh, labeling regulations uh, for Scotch whiskey. But uh, as we go over my notes, I'm gonna be enjoying a dram of the Deanston 18-year-old Highland Single Malt Scotch whiskey. It is unchilled filtered and no added coloring. And this is cognac cask finish. This is actually a bottle that's quite challenging to get now. Um, but you always want to keep an eye out for Deanston's um, specialty casts. They're really, really fantastic whiskeys. And I really enjoyed visiting the distillery uh, back in June 2018. It is an offense not to comply with the labeling regulations set out in the Scotch Whiskey Regulations 2009. It is also an offense to label, package, sell, advertise, or promote any drink as Scotch whiskey or Scotch if it is not Scotch whiskey. The front of every bottle of Scotch whiskey must clearly state which specific category of Scotch whiskey it falls into. The name of the category must be printed in a manner that it clearly shows it is a sales descriptor for Scotch whiskey, given equal prominence to each word of the category, not overlaid or interrupted by other text or images. The only words which may be added to the category description is the name of the Scotch locality or region in which the Scotch whiskey was distilled. For example, the category descriptor single malt Scotch whiskey must appear in exactly this order. However, it can be preceded by a locality or a region such as Speyside or Isla. So for example, uh, this Deanston is Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Uh, um, Highland Park could label theirs Orkney Single Malt Scotch Whiskey and so forth if they chose to. However, you couldn't put Single Malt Highland Scotch Whiskey. You can't change the order. You can't put Highland after the word single malt or anywhere else. It has to precede it and you can't put it afterwards. There are complex rules surrounding the use of distillery names and brand names on labels. If there is a risk that a brand name or use of a distillery name may cause confusion to consumers or lead them to believe a whiskey was distilled at a certain distillery it is likely that this would be a breach of the Scotch whiskey regulations. Generally speaking, it is illegal to use a distillery name as a brand name or part of a brand name on packaging and labeling unless the whiskey has wholly been distilled at that distillery. However, there are some exceptions to this ruling. All right, let's give this whiskey a little sniffy sniff. You do get the wine influence on the back end. A distilled wine, of course, being cognac. Yeah, red fruit notes, cherry, but also some peach, nectarine, a little bit of chocolateness, that multi character is in there. Maybe a little bit of a, uh, wow. Maybe like a chocolate covered cherry. It's funny, this is very different on the nose than what I remembered it. Probably because it's just spent some more time opening up. All right, on the palate. Hmm. Forty-six point three percent alcohol by volume. 
It is full flavored. It is robust. I get the chocolate covered cherry notes. I get some stone fruit notes. The maltiness, it seems to be really more intense than what I remembered. A sort of um, grain, when I say grain, I don't mean corn or, you know, like from a grain whiskey, but uh, the cereal notes is what I'm getting at. Hmm. I also have some really nice caramel notes. A real nice long finish. Really great development. Really, really nice whiskey. If you want a more full review and all the notes on this whiskey, I've already reviewed this before, uh, so you can check out that video. Now, there are some, uh, was some confusion, um, or there can be some confusion, on labels regarding the uh, categories of Scotch whiskey. So in my last video, we went over uh, the categories of Scotch whiskey, and some people st still seem a little bit confused by it. One of the issues is, if you were to fully uh, put on the label the details of what the categories mean you wouldn't have room for it all on a label or it would just be too cumbersome to try to get all on all in there so if you look at say this bottle of Balvini which is a single malt scotch whiskey uh, the term single malt scotch whiskey the single refers to a distillery so it's really a single distillery and we say malt what we really mean is malted barley scotch whiskey so single malt scotch whiskey really is a single distillery malted barley scotch whiskey likewise a blended malt scotch whiskey is really a blended distillery malted barley scotch whiskey a single grain scotch whiskey is a single distillery grain refers to it being something other than malted barley it being maize or what we call corn here in the united states wheat barley scotch whiskey a blended grain scotch whiskey would be a blended distillery grain scotch whiskey again grain meaning uh wheat corn you know maize and barley scotch whiskey and then, of course, a blended Scotch whiskey means it is a from blended distilleries, and then it consists of malted barley and grain. Grain again, of course, being uh, wheat, corn, or, or, or maize uh, Scotch whiskey. So you can see that if we were to really put in the details of what these categories are, the name gets really, really, really long, or the category gets really, really long. Now, someone had asked uh, in a comment on the last uh, video, at what point are they blending these various whiskeys to make a, a, a blended Scotch whiskey or a blended malt or, and so forth, or bl blended grain? <laughs> Again, I think the confusion in the question was, you're thinking of distillation when are you blending these? These are a cask of malted barley. Say, let's, let's take a, a, a blended malt scotch whiskey. This is a, a cask of, of a single malt and a cask of a single malt from two different distilleries. And then we're blending them, right? So we're when we're talking about these categories, we're talking about finished whiskeys in casks. Now, a single malt scotch whiskey, unless it is a single cask, right, which would probably be, or often or oftentimes they're cask strength, in a distillery, a single malt is a blend of casks, but from one distillery. So typically, when you're reading books or if you're doing a tour to distillery, in order to keep the terminology straight, they won't say, that this single malt Scotch whiskey is a blend of different casks because you hear that word blended and your mind tends to immediately think of blended Scotch whiskeys or blended malt Scotch whiskeys or blended single uh, Scotch whiskeys or uh, blended uh, grain Scotch whiskeys, right? So what those talk about is instead of blending casks within one distillery to make produce a single malt, they'll talk about marrying casks, right? or you could say combining casks. 
because that when, once that word blend gets used in there, it's a different use of the word blending uh, than when you talk about blended Scotch whiskey. Because the blending is the in the labels refers to the blending of the distilleries, not to the blending of the casks or the blending of the whiskeys. It's blending of distilleries, right? So it just gets a little bit confusing there. So now, if you're a whiskey consumer, this is important information for you know to know to. Uh, have clear in your mind when you're buying a whiskey so you know what you're getting. And this is the reason why they got the, rid of the category of pure malt, right? If you remember from the last uh, uh, video, uh, they wanted to use pure malt to mean blended malt scotch whiskey, right? And they thought that was, that's going to confuse a customer. The goal is to not confuse a customer. Confused customers get frustrated. Confused customers don't buy, right? So they're trying to preserve uh, the reputation uh, um, of the whiskeys, not to just be sort of overly regulatory, but to have clarity for the consumer. So the SWA is looking out for the consumer. So not only do you as a consumer need to understand these categories if you're getting into Scotch whiskey, uh, but if you're going to serve Scotch whiskey, you know, uh, if you're working in the industry, if you're working at a whiskey shop, if you're working at a distillery, right? If you're working in a restaurant, perhaps as a whiskey sommelier, you want to have these categories clear in your mind and be able to explain them in a way that people will um, have a clear understanding of what it is they're buying. Alrighty, um, that's about it for this video. If you subscribe to this channel, I want to thank you very much. If you haven't yet subscribed, would you like to watch my videos? I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and other social networking channels. And until next time, cheers. Hey, if you like my review, be sure to check out these other whiskey videos.